Uh, good morning there everybody, uh, Data Pioneer with the Linux Unix Tech Channel and today I want to do a quick video on how to scan your Linux system for rootkit viruses. I'm going to go ahead and reuse a video I sent to a friend um, to show him how to do the rootkit uh, rather than redo the video so we'll take a look at that right after this. Hey Fred, uh, it's Dan here. Uh, I thought I would, uh, I hadn't talked to you in a while, so I thought I'd uh, do a quick video here and show you uh, something I did on the system today. I'm up on my Farron OS uh, Linux system and uh, I thought I would take a few minutes to check my system for rootkit viruses and um, not too concerned about it getting into the Linux box and doing anything, but you know it, it does attack Windows machines if it gets on your Linux machine. It can do that anyway. So let's get out onto the uh, Wikipedia. So I did some research up on Wikipedia for rootkit, and I'm sure you know what a rootkit is. Um, but here it says Wikipedia says it's a collection of computer software, typically malicious, designed to enable access to a computer or an area of its software that's not otherwise allowed to access often masking itself uh, or its existence as other software really designed uh, to attack a Windows box um, but uh, it can attack your Linux system there are rootkits for Linux and so you know you're not completely protected uh, on a Linux platform so what I did was I uh, look, checked that out and then I went up to the rootkit hunter project and here's the website for it it's uh, rkhunter.sourceforge.net and there is a link here to the rootkit hunter version 1.4.6 so if you click that link it takes you out here to SourceForge uh, and here's the download link you can click that download link and then uh, it's a tar.gz file it gets uh, downloaded to your downloads folder or directory so let's go out of the terminal here and let me uh, CD to my downloads directory and do a listing and you can see that it did get installed here okay or downloaded rather there and so to um, expand that uh, or to unarchive it what I did was I did a tar I do a sudo tar xvzf of rkhunter uh, dot tar okay dot gz and let it uh, expand it Okay, and expanded all the files out. And so now that's, uh, if I go cd or ls.lh, you can see that here's the directory that it expanded uh, those files and placed them in when it uh, ex exploded this compressed, or this tarball here, compressed tarball. And so let me cd into that one. And uh, you can see when I run a listing here, that uh, we have an installer we need to install that and then we have the associated files that go along with the installer alright so the first thing we need to do is actually run the installer so let me clear the screen here and so let me do a sudo we'll need sudo privileges and let's do a dot uh, forward slash installer dot sh tech tech install and let's go ahead and install that so it's completed the installation here and um, now that it's done that we'll need to update those files and so let's run an RK Hunter let me do a clear screen first RK Hunter we need a sudo uh, do attack and update okay so we're going to update the RK Hunter files and so here it's going to go out and update the data files no updates were available so that means we have all the updated rootkit files that we need to scan the system with all right and I've already done this but um, and uh, let me show you that I ran a, um, a tail against the log file that's generated uh, there is a log file that gets generated here when you run the scan on the system um, for looking for any rootkits on your system and it's at varlog 
rkhunter.log. So let me do a tail of var log rkhunter.log. Okay, and you can see that uh, here uh, there were no updates here, and it checked the files. Actually, um, hmm, it's interesting. Um, that really didn't show me what I was looking for. So let me, uh, let me clear the screen. Let me just run it again. And so now let's go ahead and run the command that actually scans the system. And so let's do a sudo RK Hunter and it would be tac tac uh, check and then I'm going to run a tac tac sk to skip what that does is that flag uh, allows it to stop and pause and show you uh, rather than run through the whole thing quickly it pauses when it comes upon a warning or something like that what we're looking for here is we're looking for any warnings that might be flagged warnings are bad uh, that means that you have potential rootkits and unless you can explain or see in the log file why you're getting a false positive uh, you would need to be concerned about it or should be so let's go ahead and run that and so it's going to run that checker now I am getting some warnings so we'll need to investigate that and we'll do that at the end it's checking for root kits now and here are all the root kits it's checking for it didn't find anything so that's good so unless we get warnings on the root kits themselves, uh, we we'll probably don't have anything to worry about. It's performing a diff additional root kit checks. It's doing uh, root kits in other directories. Uh, it's called second root kit. Performing malware checks. Didn't find anything yet. Uh, suspicious large shared memory segment. It says there's a warning there. So if we come back up, um, checking for hidden files and directories. It did get a warning on that and we did get a warning here on shared memory segments otherwise we got no warnings when it looked for rootkits which is good. Now we did get warnings on like uh, Ben Witch and Ben Fgrep, Egrep, um, some other things. Okay so let's look at the log file Alright, so let's do a clear this no, let's not clear the screen. Let's do a um a more on var log rk hunter dot log. Oh gotta be sudo to do that. Okay, and so looking for warnings. So let's go through this. I'll have to look closely because it doesn't do any uh, red highlighting when you run the more command on my system anyway. Okay, so we did get uh, one warning here. It says uh, got the warning because the file doesn't exist, mm -hmm. okay, but that's not that's not a problem. Here we got a warning on add user, but if you look down here below it, it says uh, that uh, that particular command's been replaced by script. All right, so not a problem. Um, keep going. Here's another one where user bin LDD has been replaced by script. And so if it's been replaced by a script, that means it's not going to match the fingerprint of the rootkit file, a binary rather. Uh, and so the rootkit is going to pick it up. Rootkit RK Hunter is going to pick it up as a potentially modified file. All right. So here we've got uh, egrep and fgrep. Those have been replaced by scripts as well. Ben which is replaced by a script. Uh, we noticed that we got that earlier. And I think um, those are the only ones that I found. I'll, I'll go through the rest of this. Okay, I don't see any more yet. Yeah, I think we've uh, gotten through all the warnings, so we really, really didn't get any more warnings. All right, so let's clear the screen. Let's do a tale of uh, var, can't type today, log, um, rkhunter.log, 
and it says that uh, rootkit checks, rootkit checks, 470. Possible rootkit is one, and I think that's that one incident, incident instance rather where um, it said that the file had been um, wasn't existing. Okay, and so I don't think that's an issue. Application checks, all checks skipped. Um, system check took about 40 seconds, and then it uh, that was as of 17.06.09 Eastern Daylight Time 2020. So looks like my system's pretty clean. I don't have too much to worry about here. You might want to run that on yours, see what you get. Um, just if you make yourself uh, feel more comfortable that you don't have any rootkits residing on your system. Um, if you're as paranoid as I am, you want to do things like that occasionally. All right, so um, I will uh, leave it with that, and let me know if you have any issues. Let me know how your system turns out. Take care. Bye.